question for Wednesday's Q&A from Ellen Evans. And she was from a previous one with her Cocker Spaniel Cocker pup. Spaniel pup uh, four months old. Any tips for building engagement outside with distractions? Four month old pup, generally obedient indoors, but outside in the garden and on walks, he's too easily distracted. I, am I expecting too much too soon? He isn't too fussed about taking treats on walks either. That's that, yeah, that might be a little high expectation for a four month old pup. I don't know, I 16 mean, weeks old? With big distractions outside, I think that might be a little bit challenging. But she said, he, just even in her garden. Yeah, but she also said he's not super fussed about food, which means he doesn't want food. Oh. So, <laughs> you see what I deal with, guys. This is what I deal with on a I'm daily basis. I'm feeling very basis. Com combative today. I'm sorry. We switch roles. All right. <laughs> um, and that one, I think your biggest thing is you got to build up some food drive, and yeah. Bethany's gonna go over that one because that's her whole jam. Oh, okay. That's her Apparently whole that's my jam. But okay. if you can get a body block in there, meaning that you step in front, kind of block the thing that's distracting your pup, look for a moment, a window to grab that focus and bring it back up to you. Guys, think of a short attention span of your puppy is 1.34 seconds. It's so short. That window is so small. So even if you are like, hey, 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 and the puppy's like, <gasps> and then gone, you've lost it. Yeah, you have, have that split second to grab that focus bring it back to you and then ask yeah. the dog for what you want even that means walking with purpose and moving away from that distraction i think out on your actual walks you'll have more luck with that in your backyard that's a little bit more stifling in the sense that you don't have as much room to move and maybe that distraction is following you around or you can't get too far away from it bethany go okay i'm gonna fix all the things he just oh, said oh god so <laughs> He said block your puppy. He's assuming you're even able to get in front of your puppy to get your puppy's attention. That's true. I am. Because <laughs> I'm assuming on leash like we've taught them. Yes, yes, on leash. But but here's the thing. So you've got two ways of working through this in the garden or, or on a walk. Um, food, or, food or no food, okay? So it'd be great if you built some more food drive, but food or no food. If you get a chance to, if your puppy's kind of with you and you catch them early before they're completely disengaged from you, pulling five feet in front of you, yeah, get in front of them and be like, hey, look at me, good job, let's go. And then redirect them into um, another direction based off of the distraction. That's assuming that you can even get in front of them soon enough. If you can't, if they're already out here, You've really got to just be like, let's go, turn, look up, and confidently move in the other direction. Um, you know, physics, so don't drag your dog. But if you move with purpose, if you're like, let's go, turn and move, they should follow you. And here's the reason they should follow you. Because your regular walks, when it's boring and in your backyard and it's boring, that's what you're working on all the time, is turn, food, turn, food turn take five steps sit food like that's what it is and, and don't do like a circle you'll you'll get it, it's not good you want to do like 180s and what do we call this magical routine bethany let's go work oh. or follow me work other trainers um you might hear us be like just teach your dog to follow you follow me work that's what that is is getting your dog to turn when you turn move when you move stop when you stop that's the goal and practice it when it's easy. So when you do get that dog down the street and your puppy's like, woohoo, and you don't have time to get in front of them first, you want to, sorry, <laughs> it's just one of those days, you're going to go, let's go turn and move. And hopefully that muscle memory will kick in because um, food, you're right. Food's not gonna matter to a 16 month old puppy when they see uh, their neighbor dog, you know, or they see a squirrel or something like that. The amount of food drive it takes to build up to trump something like that can be really difficult. The puppies that are here, and by here I mean in LA where we are, um, they know they're at school. And so keep that in mind. Try to treat your walks like school. It's all work. There is no trying to take a leisurely stroll and checking your phone because you think you need to get out with your puppy for 30 minutes. Take that 30 minutes and make it 15 and make it condensed obedience work with more food, more focus, less distractions as best as you can. And the best place to start with that is your garden. The only other thing I would say is do, a, do it when your puppy's hungry, first thing in the morning, and then feed the rest of the dog's food after their walk. Um, and, and just hand feed your puppy through the day for all their training. If you really want to build a better food drive, 
You don't have to create a monster, a food monster, but start feeding, hand feeding, all of their food through the day. And you can do jackpot rewards, meaning you can do a handful of food when you're working in the house. If you've got three minutes, do come handful of food four times, you're good. Do more hand feeding rather than uh, bowl feeding if you wanna build more food drive for the next couple of weeks. Okay. So let's recap. That was how to build food drive. Food's only gonna only really gonna work on your walks if you get your dog below threshold, which means you still have the ability to give and have them take food. If not, means, just get out of there. Yeah, and you've lost them when you can't get them to take food and they're yeah. just shooting ahead of you. So let's go work to get them out of there. Walk with purpose doesn't mean you have to run out of there. Shut a walk as far as you can. And the minute you get even a little bit of focus, capitalize on it, good. use food again. Or, or her <laughs> high pitch good. Yes. All right, uh, let me do another long one and then you mm -hmm. can have a short one. Katie says, hello, I have a 10 week old, oh, puppy puppy, sorry, 10 week old Bernese and greater Swiss mountain dog puppy. Wow, that's like two mountain dogs put together. I bet that's interesting. 150 pounds. Yeah, he'll only be 150. But right now he's- On a good day. On a, on a good day. Right now he's like this big. Uh, he settles and sleeps well in his crate with one to two potty breaks at night. During the day, he's happy to go in his crate. He'll settle in there for five to 15 minutes. In the crate? In the crate. But then he starts whining and panting. Normal. Ooh, panting, pant, panting stress. Not it's just whining, stress, but, but pant stress. Stress is panting. still a little bit normal in the crate in the beginning while they get used to it. He prefers to nap in his playpen area, but will pee in there if left unsupervised. Occasionally he'll have a nap um, and not have potty accidents. I'm wondering, should I take him out of crate before he gets upset to build positive association or just let him work it out and take him out after he settles? I think, so she capitalized on something. She said the panting is stress. I think you're getting stress. One, taking your puppy out before that happens. Now you're at like a three minute crate session. I don't think that's gonna benefit you. I think you need to do more mental work. 10 week old puppy means that their training periods aren't gonna be super long, maybe five, 10 minutes. 10 minutes if you're really lucky of just doing relationship building exercise. Name, come, good treat. Name, eye contact, good treat. Luring practice. You're working through that mental stimulation that can lead to that anxiety. Puppies have a lot of different, a lot of different energy that uh, manifests itself in different ways. It could be overstimulation, which is jumping. It could be overstimulation, which is whining and panting in the crate. If you take that energy, you put it into a good channel, then there's less of it to go into the bad behaviors. It's not bad, but it's something your puppy's uncomfortable with. Yeah. So there is a certain portion of that whining and that panting that you're just gonna have to let them deal with and work through, yeah. but you can help them by working through some of that mental stimulation, calming them down, minimizing on Affection. That's a big oh, I'm one. Dying. I'm waiting I know, for a I know. break to I was gonna give, Well, I'm going to give it to you. The affection is going to be all yours. I just want to say this part. But when they are in there, I do let them work out a portion of it, but I help them on the interim with training and mental, mental workouts like training. I affection. think that you always want to include crate in your routine, even if it's painful. I think it's important for a dog. This dog is going to need to be crated whether even if he's amazing at six months old out of crate there are going to be times in his life he needs to be crated so i would try to to work on that and not give him true rest and he's resting in the playpen a true rest because he's not resting in crate so um so just kind of take that for what it's worth but yeah to jump on what he said um he said affection but it's more than that when you're when you're dealing with um crate stress so I don't even want you to just give too much affection. It's, it's such a general thing and we talk about it all the time. I want you to watch how you're working with your puppy. Are you working with your puppy emotionally or constructively? So what I mean by that is like, oh, good, good boy, oh yeah, oh, oh, good sit, oh, you're so cute, oh, I love you, oh, you're little now and you're gonna be huge. <laughs> and I know you wanna enjoy that aspect of his life, but you're training the puppy to be a dog not for the puppy to stay a puppy. And please keep that in mind when you're working with him. I want your training sessions to be more constructive, less emotional. Puppy, come, good, sit, good, food. You know, place, good, food. Keep it more even keel. You can sound motivational, like a track coach or something like that, but you don't want to sound emotional. Um, and I think that is just as important as not spoiling your puppy rotten. And you know they're already thinking about it, but when can they give affection? Um, can they at all? Is there certain times of the day where they can? Well, just don't give your, just, there's, there's little 
don't do it while you're working your puppy. It needs to be at the end of a training session, but not at the end of a training session if he's about to go in crate. That, that's the big one. Yeah. Because the minute you give a lot of affection to the dog, why would they want to go in the crate? Yeah. Why would they want to stay in the crate for 30, 45 hour when they just got a whole bunch of affection and show them how great it is to be out of the crate with that affection? Just, I, I would try to just keep your affection more uh, massage related and calm related. This motion, not this motion. And not even like this. Like slow. slow and and soothing low tones. I think that's going to be the most important thing for you, to not generate excitement around touch and to not touch 15 minutes before you put them in crate. I think those are some of the main things to to focus on. And then um, you want to move on to one of your short ones. Yeah, it's a little shorty. All right. Hi, my puppy is eight months now, and I'm un unable to break the habit of her jumping on people. I've tried leash. That's oh. usually one of the easiest ones. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> so put a leash on your puppy and next time she tries to jump on someone, one, hold her back, two, step in front, and then step into her. It's a spatial thing. So if your puppy has the freedom to jump on people, you can't just say no and expect it to stop. You have to work your puppy through it. Another great way is using crate for the first 30 minutes of people coming over to your home. It's eight months old though, right? Eight months? Eight months old, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say use a training tool yet. I'm just gonna say get control of the head and get control of the body. Because I don't know what kind of dog and, this and is if you either, can't, so. well, what I, All I'm saying is like the, the crate thing is really just preventative. Like I don't even want to mess with the dog right now. We'll do crate for like puppy puppies, but when he says crate, he just means if you can't work with your dog on leash in a controlled situation, just crate them. And I know when he said put a leash on your dog, he sounded a little ornery, but. You've been picking on me all day. <laughs> You did, you sounded kind of condescending, let's face it. But he didn't mean it that way. I cannot tell you how many times we come across families who have this problem and they don't leash their dogs when people come over or the kids come home from school. Um, so we didn't mean it any type of way, but we genuinely did mean uh, to be preventative and have a leash on your dog first so you can guide them through the steps that you want them to take, the, all the steps that he mentioned. Have it, you know, kind of blocking, having them stop and sit, teach place to redirect them, and they don't get to say hi till they've semi-relaxed, which means the person or persons coming through the door have to ignore him till he settles while you manage his energy and teach him how you want him to behave rather than reacting to the jumping. Because you can correct jumping. You can do that. You can learn how to do that. You can find a trainer, learn how to correct jumping, but it will not help you teach your dog what you want them to do instead. That comes with being proactive, having them on leash, telling them what you expect from them from the beginning, not after they've gotten in trouble. The people too sense. coming in. No look, no oh, yeah. touch, no talk. If someone yeah. comes in, you're working your puppy as hard as you possibly can. Leash, body blocking, and they're like, food redirect. What? and they explode right when they come in. Your puppy has no control over the other person's energy, so it's something that mom and dad have to do. You control the other energy, you control your puppy's reaction. That's where you have the perfect situation where if you're gonna get results, it's gonna be there. And you might need to tell, you might need to sit down and have a family talk with the kids. Mm -hmm. Any of you families out there where the kids are causing trouble, kids three years old and up can start to learn impulse control around dogs. They should learn to respect them, that they're not stuffed animals, and to not amp them up without permission from mom and dad. I know that sounds like a tall order, but I was raised that way, and I'm uh, we work with many families who do that, and it's amazing, and who don't do that, and it's not amazing. Not as good. <laughs> not, not as good. But so it's doable, here, though. Them. That's my point, it's doable. Let's shift gears. What if she's talking about the walk? Anytime you're on the walk, same thing. It's a little bit different on the walk because you have a big eight month old dog or at least an older mature dog. Mm -hmm. Ask for a sit first. If people come up and they have high energy, you say, no, 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 I'm so sorry, we're, we're working. Training. You can't pet my dog and then get yourself out of there as soon as possible. Sometimes you have really, really nice, respectful people that when you say you're training, they say, ooh, and they're kind of, their brain lights up a little bit and you say, ooh, this is someone that can help me. So you say, can I give you a treat? You ask for the sit. You allow them to be calm. You'd do that with an eight month old? I would do it with an eight month old. I'd do it with any dog. I do it with two, three year old dogs. If I have people that are respectful, that are willing to help the process, I train service animals. So oh, I need yeah. people to but, come up and say hi to my dogs, but I need them to do it in a calm, respectful way. But don't the service dogs aren't supposed to say hi back? When they train, they are. Because if they do therapy work, 
and they got to go into the hospitals. So it depends. It depends on what your goals are. It depends on what your lifestyle is like with your dog. If your dog is out of control, I would advise no greeting whatsoever for three to six months and then add in what he said. And get control of the head. Yes. Get a train wheel if you're going to get control of the head. Okay, guys, we have... We answered three questions in 17 minutes, and we have like 45 left. We did good. I, I was going to be really quick on these. I mean, we were going to be super quick. Yeah, yeah. Ricky, we're going to be really quick. Ricky, you underestimate us. Okay. Belinda says, I have a three-month-old Cavapoo. I wish I had read your blog before I picked up my puppy. I'm struggling with separation anxiety and toilet training. Um, I allow my puppy to roam free. Uh, I feel like I made so many mistakes. I don't even know where to start. Oh, I can do this fast. And, and you can't fix it unless I say something ridiculous and we'll move on really fast. I thought you told me not to fix it. What? Okay. I mean, anyway. Okay. So Belinda, 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 this is what you're going to do. You're going to go on YouTube and you're going to find how to teach puppy basics. And it's going to be dog basis. It's going to be place, come, uh, crate, and sit and down, which are kind of just sidelined. And you're going to work on that for your dog's food, for your puppy's food every day, five to 15 minute sessions, as many times as you can. You're gonna, you're gonna pull back on affection and sweet and soft and cute voice. You're gonna pull back on that for two weeks to 30 days. Um, you are going to research separation anxiety with puppies and go ahead and find uh, some more specifics on the layer on to what I already said. You're gonna get your puppy on a schedule. And if you're home, that's gonna be every hour and a half. You're gonna get three to five minutes to potty, back and work with them for 10, five, 10, 15 minutes, back and crate. And you're gonna do this rotation all day long if you're home. If you're not able to be home, that's a whole nother question, sorry. That's a whole nother thing for me to answer. This is gonna give you a, a head start. Um, so you schedule, training, withhold so much emotion in your voice and in your touch with your puppy, two to four weeks. Please follow up with any questions for next week. DM us for the schedule. We'll send you one. Oh, cool. Beautiful. Anything else? Nope, that's it for that one. Um, 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 uh, Doodles, Utah. How do you, uh, do you have any blogs or saved Q and A's on how to help a puppy who pees every time they're excited? We do. And Ricky even puts in questions like um, below our IG stories. So if you go to just the little IG stories tabby thing on Instagram, It'll show all of our Q and A's, and then the questions are even logged in below. And uh, but just to be super quick, it's it has to do based off of emotion, so you have to be less emotional. So does other people when interacting with your puppy. That piece. Can you give a little bit more of an explanation? Just because I don't know where that it's going to be difficult. It's to early. Find. It, it's, it'll be difficult to find. Ricky yeah. says. So um, it, it's got to it's got to be less emotional. So whenever your puppy pees. Um, it's based off of excitement. It's probably just submissive pee, not necessarily nervous pee, just submissive pee. Mm-hmm. And so you, it really stinks. Ignore, you ignore, ignore, ignore. You don't ignore, touch your puppy ignore. as much. Mm-hmm. You don't touch your puppy as much. And you make sure they go out to potty extra uh, before you do pet your puppy. And hopefully by doing this, it'll, they'll get better Control bladder. the amount Control. of water as well. That's a huge one. Oh, one yeah. The first Control things water. I do is if I'm giving an inch and a half of water every time I give water. Now I go down to a half inch. I wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Dog is panting. Check the gums. If they're dry and sticky, they need a little bit more. Give them a little bit more and kind of go off of that. I would also wait to spay. Side note. That's okay. Um, none of these were good. None of it's these. It's older puppies. So, so where do we, where anyone do we whose questions we didn't answer, guys, I'm sorry we're out of time for those. Resubmit next week. They're also older puppies, so we'll, we'll get to them next week. Yeah, nine, nine months old. We will get, we'll get, we'll get to them next month. Yep. Um, what about the, the other ones? Are these the special ones? Those are our special ones. Video, our ultra special. Questions that up? Yeah. So, video. Um, so, we recently put out a video on Instagram that was all about us walking. Bethany had the crazy dog. I had the sweet little angel and Blanton. TikTok. And, and TikTok. TikTok. Thank you. Sorry, TikTok. TikTok. No, we didn't forget about you. Uh, I had the angel. Bethany had the crazy one. And uh, we basically showed you how to use food to grab focus, grab attention. But a lot of these questions are, what if our puppies aren't motivated by food? So, Bethany, I'm going to give you the first one and uh, you can take it away. Can I say, I, I have something to say first. Yes, please. I love it when you have things to say. So, so many people ask this question, and it's it's a very valid question, and we're going to answer it as best as we can. However, part of the reason your puppy is not going to take food is if you let your puppy engage with their environment all the time. The puppies that you saw in the video, good, they don't engage with their environment. They engage with their handler. 
they're human, you know, whoever is walking them. So we are the value. It's not just the food. We do condition them to look to us for food, but the main thing is they never say hi to a puppy on a walk. They never say hi to a dog or a person or any of that, or it's very, very rare. And if they do say hi, it's structured. It's sit and get focused first, then they're released to say hi. And if we can't have them sit and get focused first, just like when he trains his service I know, dogs, and keep on going. we keep on going. So when Sparky trains service dogs, he doesn't allow his service dog to engage with anyone unless first the focus is on him. This is key. This is so important. And I think it's a step that's, that's really often missed. If your puppy is sniffing and pulling and going wherever they want to go, um, that's another reason they're engaging in their environment over their human. When we go for a walk, we don't walk, we work. And that's why our 30 minute walks for you guys are only like 15 minutes for us and we get an even more exhausted puppy because we're constantly working with our puppy out on a walk. We may not even get very far around the block, you know, cause we're doing turns and stop and sit and stay and down and come and walking a little bit again. I just want you to keep that in mind. All the advice we're about to give on the food stuff, it won't matter. It, none of it will matter if you don't matter and condition uh, your dog to make sure that you're the one that they, they get to engage with on a walk, not their environment. This is how we create more neutral, more and that neutral was, dogs, um, calmer dogs. It's Stalia Duff. That was uh, an answer to your question right there. Yes, it's the same thing for people as well. If they engage with every person, they feel entitled. That was one of your questions. How do we get our pet to stop feeling entitled to say hi to every person? You eliminate all those greetings. You have them work for you. And then maybe you work into the greetings in a very, very methodical way. Look at it this way. If you can't do your turns and your obedience for food in your house, in your hallway of your condo, in your backyard, you certainly can't do it out in front of your house or your block or a full blown walk. So these are all stages that you're going to work through. Um, do you want to talk about building food drive? No, that's you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't build food drive that much. I use Okay, lunch. so let's make sure that all of you guys out there in TikTok world too, because I know we got a lot of questions from TikTok, is what you're doing is you want your dog to uh, uh, eat their meals out of your hand, your puppy. Really, any puppies under six months old, 90% of their meal, meals or more should be from your hand. And as I mentioned earlier, if uh, you're busy, no big deal. Do like four recalls in the house for a handful of food. It's, it's, it's called jackpot, you know, or, or quick, quick food reward, rapid food rewards. Um, it's so important. And if you feed fancy raw food to your dog, more power to you. Get a set of gloves and hand feed. She's done it. I've seen her do it. It was yep. disgusting, but she did it. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and that is how you, it, you're not cheating. You are utilizing a resource necessary to a puppy to build focus, which you can wean off of mm -hmm. in the future. But, uh, but it's key, it's, it's really important. And then when you do go for that walk or whatever the case is, uh, do it before the meal. Now, if you have a nervous puppy, insecure puppy, that is a little bit different. Um, you, you'll need to do more food work in the house and, and in the backyard and things like that, that you'll have to really separate your stages out. Like I mentioned before, even if you do a boring dry kibble, no offense to anybody, I didn't mean any offense by that, but if you do some boring dry kibble, go get a roast chicken, cut up a few pieces and put in it and put it in the fridge, everything will smell like roast chicken. There's lots of little tips like that you can do. Mm -hmm. If your puppy is teething, put a little bit of water, into the dry kibble, make it a little bit spongy, try hand feeding it that way. And your puppy can skip one or two meals. You don't want them to skip like a full day, like an adult dog, it's, it's no big deal. Um, but if as long as your puppy doesn't have any issues with being too thin already, which some small breeds can have those issues, so I have to say that. But uh, if not, you can skip a few meals and by dinner or breakfast the next morning, they're gonna be like, what are we doing today? And you're like, yes. I you built the drive. Yeah. You made it. But you don't want to go any further than that. Uh, there's lots of little tweaks like that you can do. Anything to add? No, I like that for some of our younger puppies, but we do have a couple of questions there for some of the older dogs as well. Okay. I think um, building up a strong food drive is going to be really beneficial to the puppy. Just to give you an idea, we build up food drive with our dogs inside our facility 
for two to three weeks mm -hmm. before ever going outside and doing a full walk outside. Give, give context, what is that, like three, four days a week? Three, four days a week of doing it. So you're looking at maybe about a week and a week half. Week and a half. And then once you finish up that week and a half, then start going out there. But we still don't even walk around the block yet. We do in front, outside of our facility, mm -hmm. doing back and forth work, taking food, turning, taking food, turning. Yep. All of it is under threshold. The minute we have a distraction that's too big, we might even kind of go off to the side, let them pass, and then work through our puppy's focus on that distraction. And, and what if we discover a new distraction? Like, oh my God, this puppy is terrified of traffic and we live in LA and, Ooh, and it yeah. literally really goes from perfect focus to zero focus and stoic or nervous puppy. Mm -hmm. Then we have to layer on YouTube sounds of traffic inside, get yep. that better and better and, and increase the volume before we can transition to outside at a calm time of day. So sometimes you really do want to make these, these slow transitions. Now let's give some other options. So some people don't have enough time to like do all the food work that Bethany just mentioned. If you have an older dog who just isn't food motivated, some people can't even get that older dog to become food motivated. I like to also use training tools, so you can use anything that gets control of the head. There's mm -hmm. slip lead, martingales, other tools like uh, prong collars and puppy prongs that we recommend using a private trainer coming with you and teaching you how to introduce those because there is a right and the wrong way to do it. You don't always want to feel pressure on that leash. That doesn't help you. That just teaches your dog to fight you more and become more stubborn. A couple questions here is, um, what do you do if your dog isn't food, made, food motivated at all and just wants to kill every dog they see? You oh. seek intense private behavioral modification yeah. help from a professional dog trainer who shows you how to use training tools. Yeah. Not positive reinforcement only. That's not the style for a dog like that. You want a balanced dog trainer that's going to help you through it. Yeah. Uh, what's next? Super helpful if your dog is food motivated, ours is not. Bethany's trick of getting them food motivated, building that up. It's not something that they come out of the room food motivated. Some dogs do, a lot of dogs don't. You have to build up that drive and the focus on the food. And, and I'll be really honest with you guys. I have time. I got 60 seconds. I got plenty of time. Um, when Ooh, so much <laughs> growing up, uh, where I grew up, which is in a very uh, rural area, I wasn't taught to use a food initially with puppies. It was all leadership based, but there were mm. hardly any distractions. I was able to work my, my puppies in a controlled environment in the backyard with a field of hay. There were, there was so the only distractions was the grass and the occasional bird flying over. Okay. So I was able to build up lots of leadership skills and lots of patience and slowly layer on distractions us personally we don't have that ability in the city so we got to utilize everything we can and so you've got food, to find a way to body build up language, the food drive. leash yeah. control head control now you can try toy based stuff but just just be careful if, if you've got a dog that's crazy out of their mind about the toy you got to make sure your energy is really relaxed and really like a neutral firmness and your puppy knows a really good drop it before you try to take that toy into the real world to get their attention please keep that in mind but you can also utilize toys this one has a lot of likes on instagram i just want to go over it i do both but sometimes he's supercharged and none works well, the fact that you say only sometimes means it's working part of the time. Yeah. So that means you're maybe getting above threshold for the times it doesn't work. Go back to below threshold. If your dog gets amped up when he sees the dog from 400 feet away, and then at 200 feet he just loses it, then the 400 feet is where you work. It's your threshold. You it. That's, That's under your threshold, threshold yeah. versus over. Under threshold is you're still able to influence your dog's decisions. Oh, I like that. Very, very definitive. That's yeah, very I'm nice. a trainer. It's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> it's almost like we've done this before. <laughs> so yeah, you want to work them below threshold and you want to actually build up your threshold. So maybe now it's 400 feet, but in three weeks you're like, I'm 50 feet away and my dog's still looking at me, but just barely pat yourself on the back. That's yeah. the goal of it. So when you find yourself, you, you want more? Yeah. Okay, so um, one more thing cause before we go is uh, make sure you're not just focusing on this stuff on the walk. Make sure you've got really, your dog, your puppy is calm at the threshold. Sitting calmly, you can open the door, close the door, they're not rushing through it. Same with the leash. If your puppy or dog sees you pick up the leash and they're like, woohoo, then you're, you, you've got no hope out they on your They just asked walk. for a 20 minute training session in the backyard, <laughs> yay! Exactly, so, so make sure you're targeting Targeting your puppy's state of mind first before you even go out on your walk and that'll explain why you're sometimes successful and sometimes not so make sure you've got that calmer focus inside and some people um, we suggest that they do 
10 to 15 minutes of work in the house, getting their puppies focused before they even go outside. Is it you important? You want to just answer that last one? She, she took the time to type it all out. Alfie, when training an eight month old teenager to be calm around other dogs on work, a walks, it's better to teach them sit and wait until the dog passes or better to keep them walking. Not only keep them walking, Alfie the beast, but you want to be in charge of the direction of their head. You want to move out and around. We call it bubbling out or horseshoeing out. You want to navigate them away from the um, the distraction to keep their eyesight moving with you to put them into follower mode. Dog, human, dog turns, human cuts off and goes the opposite way. Yeah, preferably put yourself in the middle all the time. All right, guys, thank you so much Thanks for, for us, um, watching. And we'll see you next week. Please submit questions again if they we didn't get them. Yes, if we didn't get to your question. There's yeah. a few of them. Sorry, guys. We just we ran out of time. Yeah, Wednesday. We're, we're so fast at talking. We, I know. Yeah, we usually are. I don't so know what happened. So Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time next week. See you guys. Bye.